everybody, it's Crystal. How are you doing today? I wanted to talk to you a little bit about sexuality and spirituality. And in particular, I wanted to talk about homosexuality uh, and bisexuality and um, all of that. Okay, so I, I don't want to get uh, go down um, into the terminology too much. But when I was growing up in the 80s, you know, being homosexual was considered to be a strange thing, a freakish thing. And so I remember very acutely uh, having some kids in our high school uh, who were who were gay and how they were picked on and also bullied. And I remember just having a heart, like, well, I, I mean, I've always had a heart for the underdog, but just um, on a fundamental level, not really understanding that while at the same time being a fundamentalist Christian. So I was you know, locked up in my Bible. And so I, I knew what the dogma around that was. And I, and I must say that as a, as a young person in organized fundamentalist organized Christianity, I was very ignorant of, of issues and of um, people's feelings and people's sovereignty. You know, I felt at the time that people needed to conform to a certain way of being and that being had to be in lockstep with what you'd find in scripture and, and and i was one of those people who like when i was in my late teens early 20s i was holding up signs against abortion and just uh closed minded but on a on a deeper level feeling having a lot of feelings around various issues, but but not the least of which was homosexuality. And I think it was probably because I was destined to give birth to a homosexual child. <laughs> and even before I had my baby, um, I, I was moving out of religion and I was moving out of dogma and there's still the, the dregs of it and the, the residuals of that, but just opening myself up to different cultures, different people, and almost wanting to learn as, as much as I, I could. And at that time, when I was leaving fundamentalist Christianity, I had a real reaction, like a pendulum swing against it. And so anything Christianity dogmatically taught, I started to take the opposite side of it. And so issues around things like homosexuality or, um, uh, well, abortions, not even talked about in the Bible, but like, I would just, I took the opposite side of what or like fundamentalist Christians were taking. And so I really embraced the homosexual community. I um, went out and had, you know, different experiences, not like that. Although, I mean, not necessarily not like that. No, but I, I just, I had different, like I met people, you know, I went to gay bars and went to drag shows and I just like immersed myself in the openness of that. And I've just seen over the years of my life, I'm 50 years old, how dare you bring that up? But I've seen over my life just how things have changed. Let's start with the hopeful stuff. Like, oh my God, since the, the 80s when the gay kid was being bullied, like we've come so far. Like when my daughter was in high school in the, in the early, you know, 2010, 11, 12, when she was in high school, like kids were starting to take up for the underdog to include gay kids. And my daughter was a gay kid and she was part of a gay club and it was like so different from the reality and so the consciousness has changed i think a lot of what we're seeing around gender identity gender fluid fluidity um openness toward others expressions of self like all of this is coming because of an expanded awareness and consciousness like and it's nothing but good i mean and of course through that we're also going to get uh, the fringe stuff too. We're going to have people demanding respect and demanding that you recognize things. And then you're going to have people on the other side saying, I will not recognize that. I stand against it. It's wrong. I mean, you still have fringe people, but for the most part, I think the majority of us, we're coming along just fine. We're realizing like there's nothing fundamentally wrong with being homosexual. In fact, I think most of us, especially spiritual people, we understand and recognize that God is love. And this is why they say that, you know, the sages say that God is love and any expression therefrom 
well, it, it's God. It's from God. It's godly. It's love. I mean, right? <laughs> I mean, I understand how you can have sex with people, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual sex, and it's not necessarily love. And, and I wouldn't say that's necessarily good for you. Like, I, I mean, that's a whole nother Oprah, as I like to say, or it's a whole other discussion. But when you love somebody, irrespective of their gender or their preferences, you love them, well, that's coming from God, because God is love. And I don't know, I just, I have a heart for gay people, and I have a, a heart for those people in families who still don't feel comfortable to come out. I remember when my daughter came out, well, first of all, I knew, I'm intuitive, and I'm a mama, I mean, like, hello, I knew she, since she was like nine, but when she came out, she was pretty young. She was in parochial school, like straight up Catholic school. And uh, she was in eighth grade. And she just said, I, I really need to tell you something, but I'm not ready to tell you. I can't tell you right now. And I, at first I was alarmed. And then I was like, oh, she's going to tell me she's gay. And so I helped her with that conversation. And she finally, and I actually said, is it, is it that you're gay? <laughs> and she said, how did you know? And I'm like, oh my God, this took you five years. <laughs> but I, um, I, I, you know, we had a great conversation and I, I love her. And, and I told her this and I said, it's perfectly, it's perfectly perfect. You are who you are. And essentially it doesn't really matter. It's just who you are and you're perfect as you are. And she then came out to her father and he and I were separate. We're divorced at that point. And his response, he's like a staunch Catholic. His response was awesome. He's like, I love you. I don't care what your preference is. You're my baby. I love you. I support you. And I want you to be happy. And I want you to love who you want to love. And it was the best possible scenario. And then she told the whole family on both sides and everybody embraced her. I mean, it was fine. Um, I think she got a little heat in school, like, because again, Catholic school, and that was her last year of parochial school. Um, somebody made a comment about it, her being gay and, oh, well, you better believe Mama Bear got on that phone with the principal of that school and we had a we had a conscious conversation about how my gay daughter was was going to be treated and and the dialogue that needed to take place around this because if this was the first time they were seeing that then they needed to get ready because this is going to happen more and more and more and you're going to have to have a policy around this and you're going to have to have a way to talk to the kids who don't understand this you're like we're going to have to like let's get conscious y'all um, and uh, and they were hip. I was I was surprised. Some of the most enlightened religious people. I know this is going to trigger some of you, but some of the most enlightened religious people have been Catholics. <laughs> They've been open, a little bit more ecumenical, you know. And um, they understood and they fully supported her. And I called her and then just wanted her to know they supported her. So my daughter's experience coming out. I don't know that it could have been any better. Now, that doesn't mean she didn't go through her teens and become a complete monster. She did, but it's like, that's normal stuff. But I've always loved her through it. And, and I've always had a heart for kids who can't come out in their family or, or people in countries who like can't be openly who they are because they'll straight up get stoned in the street or they'll get killed or, or they'll get ostracized and cast out. Like I, I have such a heart for this and for gay people and, and just for all people. I have a heart for all people, but I especially, I especially have, and I always have had a heart, heart for this. And I just want you to know as spiritual people, because I, I'm, I'm always shocked as somebody who's not an orthodox religious person, I'm not in an organized religion, you would call me new aged or esoteric Christian, like I don't care what you call me, but I'm always a little shocked in the new age community when I still sniff a little bit of that uh, bigotry coming down from spiritual people who don't understand or who are still maybe tied to some of the dogma or just don't get it or come out of families where that just wasn't talked about. Like, I just want people to know that First of all, it's not our place to judge anybody's authentic expression of who they are. If anything, it's our place to hold space for that. And it's our place to love them as they do that. Now, if they're acting poorly, and gay people act poorly, and heter heterosexual people, all people can act poorly, we're people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about allowing sovereign, spiritual people to be exactly who they, who they seek to be 
who they must be in order to thrive. Like, we got to be for that. And we have to support that. And we have to love that. So we can't judge it. And we can't have our preconceived notions about what that behavior might imply. We don't know. First Samuel 16. Only God sees the heart. Man sees the outside, the clothes that you wear, the things that you say. And man judges based on that. Oh, he's gay? I'm, based, I'm judging based on that. Only God sees the heart and knows the heart of a person. And I really don't like when people speak on behalf of God and say what God wants and say who God is. I'm 50 years old. I've been in the spiritual streets talking about spirituality since I was 13 years old. The older I get, the less I presume to speak for God. All I can say is that there is a God. There's a source. There's an energy. There is a divinity. I can say that. I can say I'm from that. And I can tell you that you're from that too. Gay, straight, black, white, and otherwise. You're from the same source that I'm from. And that source is love. So we don't judge somebody's sovereign beingness. We love that. We love that. And insofar as we find reactions within ourselves that would be judgmental, that's just an invitation to go into ourselves and bring some light into that. See, because God doesn't judge that. God doesn't judge that. God is love. And anything outside of love is outside of perfect alignment with God. I actually became an ordained minister so I could marry my daughter to her wife. And I, I, I struggle to find a prouder moment in my life. I mean, there's been a few, but very proud of my daughter being exactly who she is. I'm very proud of my daughter-in-law being exactly who she is. I support them. Are you kidding me? I'd be there in a second. And for whatever reason, I think sometimes we're just composed a certain way energetically. We attract certain people. For whatever reason, I attract homosexual people into my congregation, my ministry, my spaces. I love it. I love it. There's nothing wrong with you, babies. You're perfect just as you are. And if you're in a situation where you cannot be yourself, just know that there will come a time as you align to your authentic and beautiful and lovely self that you will be able to emerge in wholeness and perfect just as you are. I see you. I accept you. I love you. You are loved and you're lovable. And you're lovable. Can I just say that? I just That's all I wanted to say. I have a heart. I have a heart for this community. I have a heart for this community. We've come a long way, baby. We've come a long way as a collective. Oh, I'm so thankful for the kids coming up now. Oh, I'm so thankful for the millennials. Are you kidding me? My, my generation, we love to call them lazy. What do we talk? Those are our kids. If they're lazy, it's because we're, we, can't, we can't screw up the whole world with all of our bigotry and injustice and then blame them for having a reaction to the way they were like, God bless the millennials for their free thinking. God bless the millennials for the openness. God bless the millennials who are now having children and who are not going to impose upon them or visit upon them the bigotry and discrimination that was visited upon us by our parents and perhaps that we visited upon our own children in our ignorance. So grateful. How many of you remember Matthew Shepard? That's who we were. That's who we were. Now, of course, that's not who I was. I would, I would never be. But as a society, that's where we were. I'm grateful for where we are, but we still got work to do. So, Mama loves you. And that's all I came here to say. I love you. You're perfect, just as you are. 
and may God bless you and everyone else.